Good morning, everyone. As part of our Remembrance Assembly today, I'm going to read a story. Like most stories, people will respond to uh, in many different ways. What I would like you to do when you're listening to the story today is think of two questions, or think of responding to two questions. Number one, what for you was the most important part of the story, or one that you may have liked the best? And number two, uh, what are some things in the story that you learned that maybe you didn't know before? Let's get started. This is a story called Meet Tom Longboat. It's written by Elizabeth McLeod and illustrated by Mike Diaz. Tom Longboat raced to the finish line as the crowd cheered wildly. One of the top runners in the world, Tom amazed and excited race fans. With a big smile on his face, Tom often found the energy to zip ahead at the end of his races. Other runners would be left behind, gasping for breath. Tom liked winning and hearing the crowds cheer for him, but most of all, Tom loved to run. Tom was born in Oshwegan on the Six Nations Reserve near Brantford, Ontario in 1886. His Onondaga name was Gawige. It means everything. Tom's family grew vegetables and raised farm animals, but Tom's dad died when he was just five years old. The family became very poor. Tom had many chores to do, but he still made time for fun. He liked to chase after the cows Sometimes Tom would run with his cousin. People got used to seeing the two boys racing all over the reserve. Already, Tom loved to run. When Tom was 12, he was taken from his home and sent to a school for Indigenous children. He and the other kids had to be residents there, so places like this were known as residential schools. Tom hated it. He was forced to give up his family and friends. He wasn't allowed to speak his Onondaga language. The children were treated badly and even beaten. In his second year at the residential school, Tom escaped and ran home, but he was found and dragged back. A few weeks later, Tom ran away again. This time he went to the home of his uncle who hid him. Tom was finished with school. When Tom was almost 18, he entered his first race in May 1905. He lined up with other runners in Caledonia, Ontario. Tom led all the other runners for most of the race, but he ended up coming in second. Tom didn't like that. He wanted to be first. In 1906, Tom entered the famous Around the Bay Road Race in Hamilton, Ontario. He was racing against some of the best runners in the world, no one thought Tom would do very well, but he had learned from his first race and trained carefully. Tom kept up with the other runners. In fact, he sprinted past them at the end. Even though Tom took a wrong turn near the finish line, he won in record time. Tom didn't train the same way other runners did. They ran long distances every day, but Tom would do a long run one day then the next day he would play lacrosse or walk. People put Tom down for the way he trained. They blamed his indigenous background, but switching between hard workouts and easier ones is how runners train today. Tom knew better than anyone what the best way for him to train was. The way Tom ran was different too. In those days, most runners took long high strides with their hands up and still. By keeping his feet close to the ground and his hands low, Tom saved energy as he ran. Not every race ended with a win, but Tom was becoming known as a top racer. One of the most famous long distance races in the world is the Boston Marathon. On April 19, 1907, Tom was at the starting line with the other runners ready to run it. Snow and sleet flew in their faces as cold winds blew. About 40 minutes into the race, Tom was one of the front runners. 
Then he noticed a train barreling down the track in the distance. It was going to block the race route that would force Tom to stop and he'd lose his lead. Tom put on a burst of speed and beat the train. The marathon was almost over. Tom and, other, and another runner from Canada named Charlie Petch were far ahead of everyone else. The exhausted racers headed up toward the steep hills near the end of the race. Charlie decided to take the hills slower and save his energy. Not Tom. He attacked the hills, running faster than ever. That sprint put Tom far out in front, and he won the race. Back in Toronto, where Tom was living, crowds had gathered around telegraph offices. They held their breath, waiting for updates on their hero. Everyone was so happy to receive the news that Tom had won. When Tom returned a few days later, tens of thousands of people were waiting for him at the train station. Bands played and people cheered. A huge crowd paraded him to Toronto City Hall for an official reception. Tom Longboat was famous, not only in Canada, but all over the world. The Olympic Games were scheduled to take place around London, England in 1908. Everyone expected Tom to easily win the marathon event, but Tom knew it would be a tough race. London was in the middle of a July heat wave. The race was scheduled for the afternoon, not cool in the morning. The air was hot and humid as the runners lined up to start at Windsor Castle. When the Olympic marathon started, Tom was running well, but he was having trouble breathing because of the heat. Other runners were falling down in the hot sun. They were so exhausted that they couldn't go on. Would that happen to Tom? He'd never given up in the middle of a race before. Tom was one of the front runners when disaster struck. He collapsed on the road. His heart was racing and he was so tired he was shaking. Unable to finish the race, Tom had to be carried off the course. His Olympic dream was over. Tom was so disappointed that he thought about giving up running. But Tom loved running too much to stop. So in December 1908, Tom agreed to race Durando Petri, a top runner from Italy. Durando was also collapsed during the Olympics. Fans wanted a rematch. The two men had to run around the track at Madison Square Garden in New York until they had done the same distance as the marathon. Crowds yelled as the runners circled. The pair had run 250 laps when Durando suddenly capped collapsed. The crowd cheered as Tom finished the race and won. Two months later, Tom faced off against England's top runner, Alfie Shrub, at Madison Square Garden. Tom got off to a slow start. Alfie was ahead by eight laps before the race was half over. Then Tom started to close the gap. Alfie had begun to tire. Tom caught up. When Tom passed Alfie, the English runner gave up. Tom was now the world professional marathon champion but big changes were ahead. In 1914, World War I broke out. This was a series of battles that took place mainly in Europe, but countries around the world, including Canada, were also involved. Tom wanted to do his part, so he gave up his running and all the fame and prize money, and he enlisted. At first, Tom ran races to help entertain the soldiers. Then Tom went to France to fight alongside other Canadian soldiers. He was with the 107th Pioneer Battalion, a group of soldiers made up mostly of young Indigenous men. Tom carried messages and orders between soldiers and their leaders, racing over the rough, muddy ground. He was shot at and wounded twice. Once, he was injured so badly that he was declared dead. Another time, Tom was leading a general through dangerous territory. Tom was moving quickly, trying to get him to safety. But the general couldn't keep up and ordered Tom to slow down. It was only then that the general realized who his famous guide was. Tom was so glad when the war ended. He returned to Canada in 1919.
After the war, life was very different for Tom. Running was not as popular. It had been replaced by team sports such as hockey and baseball. Tom was still fast, but he couldn't make money from racing anymore. He had to get a new job. Eventually, he found work as a street cleaner and garbage collector in Toronto. Some people made fun of him for having a job like that because he had once been so famous. Then in the late 1920s, the Great Depression hit countries around the world, including Canada. Many people lost their jobs. People couldn't buy food for their families. Many had nowhere to live. But Tom always had work throughout his tough times. He took care of his family and they lived in a nice house. Tom retired in 1944 and moved back to the Six Nations Reserve. It was good to speak the Onondaga language again. Tom enjoyed seeing old friends and family and being more connected with his community. Five years later, Tom died, but this world famous athlete has never been forgotten. In 1951, the Tom Longboat Award was created. Every year, it's given to top Indigenous athletes. Tom was made a member of the Canada Sports Hall of Fame in 1955. In 2008, June 4th, was named the Tom, Tom Longboat Day in Ontario. A race in his honour is run on this day each year. Tom would, would have liked these awards and honours, but most of all, he just loved to run. Here are some few dates and a few real pictures from Tom Longboat as a runner. In the war, there's a statue. The very cool book. Thank you very much, everybody.